areas of critical importance, these are economy and social development, specifically education, that can wean the youth away from extremist violence and bring about a transformation of uh, the environment and mindsets of the people. But I must also say that Pakistan is a very large country and uh, uh, here uh, the, the basic problem is concentrated in the north, in the tribal areas and parts of NWSP, parts of Punjab. It is not uh, uh, as such an urban phenomena where there is a different other kind of, a, uh, of, of religious tendencies merging towards extremists but not, uh, not extremist uh, tenden tendencies as such. Uh, the tendencies which tend to condone the uh, uh, extremism at times. Uh, this uh, leads to a um, significant issue raised in the study about the environment that has spawned and sustained religious extremism and militancy in Pakistan. I have focused on Pakistan as it is the pivotal, pivotal country in the region as its struggle to adjust to modernity has a wider and important relevance to the region. Uh, beyond alliances between political and religious elements as uh, 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 part of political experience, Pakistani society has gradually, gradually ceded intellectual ground to activist religious orthodoxy and has been failing to develop institutions of governance. These are two factors at the core of resistance within the society to adjust to contemporary modernizing trends and impediment to the country's socio-economic progress. Uh, it doesn't mean that socio-economic progress is not taking place. I am talking about resistance to it, uh, that it could take place at a much faster pace, but these are the factors which are contributing to that uh, slowness. I have discussed these in the study uh, as an intellectual crisis and a crisis of governance. The crisis of governance is reflected in the populist notion that ample justification of leadership failure. Our leaders have had flawed personalities and institutional failure. So we have been experimenting with our institutions and even with the constitution. It is not simply a question of democracy as national experience with democracy had its share of disappointments and institutional dysfunction. Problems can also be traced to the circumstances surrounding the genesis of the country. However, the focus in this aspect of the study is on intellectual crisis that I see in the confusion that characterizes its public discourse on issues and challenges vital to national life and relating to its orientation, outlook, and identity. This confusion is in the first instance, the product of conflict between religious orthodoxy traditions, reformist revivalist religious thinkers, and reformist thinkers with modernist outlook dating back to uh, 19th century and early part of 20th century. It's genes in the genesis of Pakistan, religion and politics got intertwined in a new matrix, distinct from the older traditions of Muslim governance or even from the contemporary precedents where secular modernist agenda was introduced by the elite, such as in Turkey and Iran. In Afghanistan also there was an effort by King Amanullah, but Pakistan was, a, was a, under colonial rule, so it could not happen there. I regard Jamaat Islami and its uh, founder Maulana Mazudi as the most important uh, revivalist reformist influence in Pakistan. This was contemporary of the Afghan movement in Egypt. Mazudi, he was the founder of Jamaat Islami. His influence in philosophy is not a precursor to present day extremism in the country. The violent Takfiri apostasy creed practiced by the Taliban and preached in extremist madrasas is a perversion of the austere Deobandi tradition that is akin to the Salafi, Saudi Salafi theology practiced in Saudi Arabia. Uh, however, jamaat -e islami and its founder exerted powerful influence in shaping religious vigilantes and thinking of urban, middle and lower middle class strata of society in Pakistan with a philosophical counter-narrative because I am not a scholar. I use it 
as a convenient expression to refer to the sense of change and progression in human condition in a society, tolerance to pluralism, and minority and gender issues that are germane to modern perspectives apart from technological process. So I am not going into the definition of what is modernity or not, but I have taken these two attributes. Jamaat has been a major influence in universities and colleges since late 1950s. With organized cadres, it has been instrumental in reconstructing the educational framework in the country and equally importantly in building an environment that resists adjustment to modernity and remains preoccupied with the much debated issue of religious orientation of the country and its Islamic ideas. The second factor contributing to the confusion in public discourse goes to what has often been referred to as the security orientation of the Pakistani state and the sense of historical injustice it carries over Kashmir. Pakistan's efforts to rectify this injustice has often been seen uh, or uh, make it appear to be seen as a, uh, as a country with revisionist agenda in the region. Pakistan efforts, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the, the religious and military alliance shaped under President Ziaul Haq against the backdrop of the Afghan Jihad induced a religious dimension to security threat perceptions and Pakistan as a defender of Islamic causes. The subsequent disappointments have given rise to a seed mentality and a victim psyche and also contributed to anti-West and anti-US rhetoric which has a history and is fed by other impulses including a sense of letdown. The resulting confusion is also manifest in the unusually angry and violent zone of public debate, especially in Pakistan. Uh, the Pakistani mind has become credulous, defensive and receptive to most outlandish conspiracy theories. Uh, and I think that this is product wise. I can say that uh, as a person who has been a diplomat of 40 years, I have to have a optimistic outlook. And But I give also reasons why there is an optimistic outlook. Well, thank you very much, Bob. I'm covered with the Cato Institute. Since this is about modernity, I'm going to ask you to In our 96 election, Bob Dole said, I will be a bridge to the past. So Clinton said, I will be a bridge to the future. Clinton won. Americans, at least back then, were looking to the future. And that, to my mind, is a sign of modernity. With Pakistan, do you think people look to the past for their identity, to their tradition, or will they be looking to the future? If that is the criteria, I would say that generally in Pakistan, people do look to their future. People do want good education. The counterpart to uh, the madrasa is the private schools in Pakistan, which are, I think, uh, which match the number of the madrasas. And these are all English medium schools where even a class would like to send his kids to get education. The problem in Pakistan has been the, the for example, the breakdown of. Uh, uh, the school systems which were run by the government and are the responsibility of the government. That has to be, to be the whole educational system has to be revamped. But people as such in Pakistan, they look to the future, they want to educate their children, they want to have the, 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 them to have, have good professional education. So uh, there, is, there is no question about it. But when it comes to uh, Many issues uh, 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 relating to the debate in the society about identity of, uh, of the nation, about Islam, uh, uh, politics, then the confusion arises about views on the question of uh, jihad, the question of uh, this extremist, this extremist militancy, Taliban. Then there is the confusion, and there I say there is this intellectual uh, crisis. Thank you.